Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. We are now in lecture 7, Query Processing. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain query processing, query optimization and query decomposition and describe phases in query processing. When the relational model was first launched commercially, one of the major criticisms often cited was inadequate performance of queries. Since then, a significant amount of research has been devoted to developing highly efficient algorithms for processing queries. There are many ways in which a complex query can be performed, and one of the aims of query processing is to determine which one is the most cost-effective. It is programmer's responsibility to select the most appropriate execution strategy. SQL user specifies what data is required rather than how it is to be retrieved. It gives DBMS the responsibility for selecting best strategy and more control over system performance. By definition, query processing is activities involved in passing, validating, optimizing and executing a query. The aim of query processing is to transform a query written in a high-level language, which is SQL, into a correct and efficient execution strategy expressed in a low-level language, which is the relational algebra, and to execute the strategy to retrieve required data. These are the phases of query processing. At the beginning, there is high-level language query which will go through query decomposition which uses system catalog to check whether the columns and conditions inside the query is defined in it. Then, after the decomposition stage, it will go to query optimization which will use database statistics to record the performance of each relational algebra decomposed from the previous stage. Once the best relational algebra is chosen, code generation stage and execution strategy is executed in the main database. We will describe more about the decomposition and optimization stage after this. Query decomposition is the first phase of query processing. The aims of query decomposition are to transform a high-level query into a relational algebra query and to check that the query is synthetically and semantically correct. The typical stages of query decomposition are analysis, normalization, semantic analysis, simplification and query restructuring. In analysis, this stage verifies that the relations and attributes specified in the query are defined in the system catalog. If you take a look at this example, select last name, salary, from employees, where salary greater than a bell. This query is rejected because you compare a salary with the characters. Hence, this query is rejected. If the query is correct just like in this example, on completion of this stage, the high-level query has been transformed into some internal representation that is more suitable for processing, such as the query tree relational algebra. If we take a look here, we have staff and branch. From staff, we choose position equals to manager and from branch, we choose city equals to London. Then these two entities are related through branch number. Next is normalization. This stage of query processing converts the query into a normalized form that can be more easily manipulated. There are two transformation rules. The first one is conjunctive normal form, a sequence of conjuncts that are connected with the end operator. Each conjunct con contains one or more terms connected by the OR operator. For disjunctive normal form, a sequence of disjuncts that are connected with the OR operator. Each disjunct contains one or more terms connected by the AND operator. Let's take a look at this example. Find an employee who have been working for project P1 for 12 or 24 months. By SQL, we will get select employee name from employee and assignment where employee number equals to employee number and project number equals to P1 and duration equals to 12 or duration equals to 24. If we are using conjunctive normal form, for each condition, we will use an operator. For example, employee number equals to employee number and project number equals to P1 and duration equals to 12 or duration equals to 24. 
for this junctive normal form for each condition we will use or operator for example employee number equals to employee number and project number equals to p1 and duration equals to 12 or employee number equals to employee number and project number equals to p1 and duration equals to 24. the next stage in uh, query decomposition is semantic analysis it identifies and reject type incorrect or semantically incorrect queries type incorrect means it is not in global schema and data type of attribute is not match for semantically incorrect it is the relations are not joined in the query and join graphs so we can check semantically incorrect queries by using a query graph or attribute connection graph let's take a look at this example to draw the query graph from the SQL, first, we check how many tables involved. In this example, we have employees, departments and location tables. Hence, we will try to create the node for each and every tables that we have. Then, this query will give you a result. Hence, result node is needed here. The result that we want here is employee ID and last name which coming from employee table. Hence, the result is connected to employee table. Next column needed is result in city which is coming from location table. Hence, another connected edge is, is needed from result to location table. Then we check the condition. First condition here is department ID from employees is equal to department ID from department table. Hence, a connection between employees and departments is drawn. Second condition is related to department table, which is department names equals to marketing. And last condition is for locations, which location ID equals to 1,500. After finish all the conditions, we need to make sure that all tables are connected to each other in order to know that the query is semantically correct. But in this example, not all tables are connected. Hence, we can conclude that the query is semantically incorrect. Let's take a look at the next example, which we modify the query to add another condition which is location ID from departments is equal to location ID in locations. We still have the same employees, departments and location nodes. And from the result, there is a connection to employees table for employee ID and last name columns. And for location, CT is needed in the result. The first condition here is for employees and departments connection through department ID. Then, location ID will connect between departments and location tables. Another added conditions are department name equals to marketing from departments and CT equals to 1500 from location table. Based on this query graph, all of the tables or relations are connected to each other. Hence, we can conclude that the query is semantically correct. The way to check whether the query is semantically correct is by using the attribute connection graph. Okay, so let's take a look on this example. Select employee ID, last name, salary from employees where salary greater than 2000 and salary less than 1800. So we check for the condition here which is about salary. So we have a salary node. To construct a normalized attribute connection graph, we create a node for each reference to an attribute which we call as constant zero. In the first condition, the operator used is greater than means we will have a connection from constant zero to the salary node. If the connection is coming out from the constant zero, the value is negative. What is the value we compared in the first condition? 2000, isn't it? Hence, it will be negative 2000. The next condition is less than. If it less than, the connection is coming from the attribute to the constant zero. If the connection is from the attribute to constant zero, the value is positive. What is the value of second condition? 1800. 
if we take a look from salary to the constant zero we have a cycle so if we have the cycle hence we need to use this formula we will find the sum of the value in the cycle positive 1800 and negative 2000 so the sum of these two values is negative 200 if sum is less than 1 then we will say that the query is false or semantically incorrect take a look our sum is negative 200 it is it is not uh, it is less than negative 1 then we will know that the uh, query here is semantically incorrect let's take a look at another example we have here two conditions also salary greater than 2000 and salary greater than 1800 so we need to create salary node and a constant zero node so the first condition is greater than greater than means we need to uh, move from constant zero to the salary the value is negative okay negative 200 then for the second condition we have uh, salary greater than 1800 greater than means we move from constant zero to the salary which is negative 1800 but if we take a look here there's no cycle if there's no cycle we will uh, straight away know that this query is correct or semantically correct the next phase or stage is simplification. It is to detect redundant qualifications, eliminate common sub-expressions and transform the query to a semantically equivalent but more easily and efficiently computed form. If we take a look on our first example here, we want to find the staff which is coming from branch number B003. In the second query, we want to find staff from branch B003 and the salary must be greater than 2000. So if we combine these two query, it will be select all from staff where branch number equals to B003 from the first uh, query and branch number equals to B003 and salary greater than 20,000 from the second query. In order to simplify these two different query, we can do select all from staff where branch number equals to B003 and salary greater than 20,000. So that's the process of simplification. The last stage of query decomposition is query restructuring. It is to restructure the query to provide a more efficient implementation. After we have done with query decomposition, we will move on to query optimization. Query optimization is the activity of choosing an efficient execution strategy for processing a query. Generally, we try to reduce the total execution time of the query, which is the sum of the execution times of all individual operations that make up the query. However, resource usage may also be viewed as the response time of the query, in which case we concentrate on maximizing the number of parallel operations. Since the problem is computationally hard to control with a large number of relations, the strategy adopted is generally reduced to finding a near-optimum solution. Let's take a look at this query. Select all from staff and branch where staff.branch number equals to branch.branch .branch number and position equals to manager and city equals to London. After the decomposition stage just now, we will have these three relational algebras. From the relational algebra, we need to calculate the disassessors for each and every relational algebra that we have constructed. In this example, we assume that there are 100 tuples in staff, 50 tuples in branch, 50 managers, one for each branch and five London branches. The first relational algebra will have more than 100k disassessors. For the second one, we have 3000 plus disassessors. And for the third relational algebra, we have 1000 plus disassessors. So from 
from the calculation, we can say that the best relational algebra is clearly the third option as it uses less these assessors. So the task of this query optimization is to pick the best strategy for the queries. In query processing, there are two choices for when the first three phases of query processing can be carried out. It's either dynamic processing or static processing. Dynamic means you carry out the decomposition and optimization every time the query is run. And for static, you just do it once, which is statically for query to be parsed, validated and optimized. The dynamic processing will give you an advantage of information of optimum strategy is up to date as you run the query processing every time you encounter a query. However, the performance of the query is affected and may cause overhead. For static processing, you will have more time available to evaluate a larger number of execution strategies. However, Execution strategy that is chosen may no longer be optimum when the query is running. So, I guess that's all for now. See you again in the next chapter. Thank you.